Hi everybody, this video is going to cover lesson 1.7, which is on midpoint and segment bisectors. All right, so before we get started into some of the problems, let's take a look at some of the definitions. A midpoint. A midpoint is just exactly what you think it is. It is a midpoint, it is a point on a segment which divides a segment into two congruent segments. They have to be equal to each other. If they're not equal, it's not actually a midpoint. So they have to be equal to each other. Remember that we have a marking that we use for that, it's called congruence, congruent, and that is we put a little hash mark on it. And so that little hash mark tells us that AM is congruent to MB. And so I have a couple things written over here. When it has the bar above it, that means segment. And when it has the little wavy line above it, that means congruent. So this top one says AM is congruent to MB. The bottom one says AM equals MB. And when we don't have a bar over it and we don't have a squiggle, that is an equal sign. And without the bar, we're talking about the length. So I can say that segment AM is congruent to segment MB, or I can say that the length of AM is equal to MB. And that would be like a number, like if this was 8 and this was 8, then they'd be equal. A segment bisector, then, is the thing which divides it in half. So a segment bisector, it can be a line, it can be a segment, it can be a ray, it can be a plane, it can be a point. It's just basically anything that cuts it in half. If it's cut, cutting it in half, that is called a segment bisector, and in that case it is cutting it through the midpoint. And so here I have a statement that says line L, that's, that's that cursive lowercase l, I had to find a good font for that. So line L bisects segment AB. I should put a segment over that. Anytime you're talking about a segment, you should have the segment over it. So line L bisects segment AB. What that means is it causes two congruent parts, two equal parts. And so again, I can say segment AM is congruent to segment MB, or I can say the length of AM is equal to the length of MB. All right, the next section is asking us, is this a midpoint? And then explain. And there's not a whole lot of markings on here, so it's kind of hard to tell. Um, I'm going to take a minute and put some letters on there. All right, so let's look at the first one. Is it a midpoint? I labeled them X, Y, and Z. So basically my question is, is Y a midpoint between X and Z? Okay, so the answer is no. And the reason is no, there are no markings. There have to be markings here in order for us to say that it's congruent. In geometry, we get kind of particular about all the specific things. And so one is we can tell we can tell that segment XY is not congruent to segment YZ. Like we can just look at it and see that. But in geometry, even though you can look at it and see it, you can't just assume that. You have to actually have a reason. And my reason would be there's no markings. Okay, well that leads us to the next question. This, I've called this one PQR. Is Q a midpoint of PR? Well, on this one, I'm going to say yes, it is because it's marked as being congruent. I just mentioned that that was a big thing. So on this one we can see that PQ is congruent to QR. And I want to put my bars up there and I want to have my squiggly line there. It's marked as being congruent, so absolutely it is. And then finally, how about this last one? Is that one congruent? Or excuse me, not congruent, is it a midpoint? And that was actually the, the trick of it. Is it a midpoint and is it congruent are two different questions. And so this time my answer is a little bit different. So I was getting to that a second ago that there are markings. However, AC is not a segment. In order for it to be a midpoint, it has to be a midpoint of a segment. If we go back up and look for just a second, that is a point on a segment. If it's not on a segment, it's not a midpoint. So no, that is not a midpoint. Okay, now we're going to take a look at these examples. It's a little bit like the segment addition postulate. It's just that now we know they're exactly in the middle. So you, if you were paying attention when we were talking about segment addition, I tried to say don't put it exactly in the middle because we don't know. But in this case, we do know. It says that they are congruent to each other. It has those markings on there. If it says that those are congruent, then they are congruent. Then E should be in the middle. And if we have the whole thing is 18, how do you think we're going to find each one? Well, I would just take half of 18. So, in other words, DE is equal to 9, and EF is also equal to 9. All right, this is a similar situation. We have NP 
and NP and MP, kind of, again, kind of like the segment addition. So NP is over here. These two have the same markings. If they have the same markings, then this is also 11. This is 11, this is 11 because they have the same markings. So I'm going to write this out over here. NP is equal to 11. The other question is, what is MP? Well, now we can get into segment addition postulate that that's 11 plus 11. That's 22 because it's twice as big. It's 11 plus 11. So the midpoint form, uh, there's a midpoint theorem as well, and it's very similar to the um, angle, uh, segment addition postulate. Okay, next section. Identify the midpoint and segment bisector. I think it's supposed to say and then find the indicated length. That's a typo. And then find the indicated length. So the midpoint is a point. It's just one thing. It's a point. In this case, do you see this is a marking? I'm going to redo that. So we have a marking here with congruence. is congruent to this one. So where is the midpoint? Doesn't that they mean the midpoint is right here? So the midpoint is F. Now that's a point. The segment bisector is typically more than a point. It's a segment or a ray or a line or it's whatever's cutting it in half. And in this case, segment CB is cutting it in half. Remember, points are labeled with capital letters. Segments also use capitals, but they need two capitals with a bar above them. Now, if there is no bar above it, that means what is the length or the measure? So if it says FQ with no bar, that means how long, that's a number. How long is it? And so FQ, if this has a hash mark and this has a hash mark, if this is 6.2, this is also 6.2. All right, now the question is, again, the measure, what's the number? How big is PQ? Well, PQ must be 6.2 plus 6.2. And so we can do that on our calculator. We plug that in and we get 12.4. So PQ, the whole thing is 12.4 because we added them together. I might point out, I don't want to confuse you, but these are marked as being congruent. Notice CF and FB, those are not marked. That is not necessarily the midpoint. That's just kind of a side discussion, but just be careful they're only when they're marked is it a midpoint or a segment bisector. Okay, part B, similar thing. We have the hash marks here. Those hash marks tell us that those are congruent to each other. So that's important. If they're congruent, then we could say that 5x is equal to 35, right? They're equal to each other. They're congruent. Their measures are equal. Because the first question is, what is x? Okay, so if I divide by 5, then I get x equals 7. So 7 is my answer here. x is 7. Okay, next question, what is the midpoint? The midpoint is the middle. And it's the middle of AB. We weren't, they weren't very clear on their question here, but they're asking for what is the midpoint of AB. The midpoint of AB is M. It's the point. It's only a point at the middle. What's a segment bisector? It's the longer thing, the segment, the line, the ray. In this case, it's line L. Okay, how long is AM? How long is AB? Well, let's look. AM has to be 35. There's two reasons for that. One is it's congruent to this one. Another is we found X is 7, and we took a 7 and plug it in, we get 35. So AM is 35. So I'm going to write that on here. This is 35. Okay, if this is 35 and this is 35, then how long is the whole thing? Well, it's 35 plus 35. We're going to get out our calculator. We're going to put that in there, and we get 70. Okay, you guys, my notifications are going crazy. I'm getting emails. I'm getting texts. I'm getting messages. Too much. Next problem, and these are going to be the last two for this video because, once again, the next page, I'll give you a preview. We can skip it. So we're skipping the last page, the next page. So M bisects JH at W. Okay, here's line M. I wish it was italics, but it's not. Here's line M. It bisects segment JH at W. That means W is our midpoint. Put a little dot there for me. 
Find the value of x and the length of the segments. Okay, if it bisects, which it says it does, that means this piece is congruent to this piece. So I put those hash marks on there. That means that 5x is equal to 3x plus 10. And so now we can solve that equation. So to solve it, we need to subtract that 3x from both sides. So we subtract our 3x, we get 2x equals 10, we divide by 2, and we get our answer of x equals 5. That's not the whole question. The question asks us to find the value of x, did that, but it also wants the length of the segments. So now, how do we do that? Well, we plug it back in. So if we know that x is 5, I'm going to come over here and I'll plug in a 5, and so that's going to give me 5 times 5, which is 25. So I'm going to give my answer somewhere, maybe over here. I'll say that JW is equal to 25. When it's the length, a number, you don't put a bar over it. Now I have to find this one. I have two ways of finding this one. The first way is super easy, and that is that WH is equal to 25. How do I know that so fast? Well, because they're equal. And if this is 25, this is 25. If you forgot that, you could plug in your 5 here, and that would give you 3 times 5 plus 10, which is 15 plus 10, which is 25, which is what I said a second ago. Lastly, can we find how long is JH? Well, there's a couple ways to do that, but the easiest way to do it is this is 25 and this is 25, so JH is 25 plus 25, which is 50. Okay, last problem. Find the value of x and then the length of qr. They don't give us a whole lot of information in words, but they give us a lot of information in the picture. Notice the hash marks. Those hash marks tell us we have congruence. Congruence means these two things are equal to each other. So we have 4x minus 10 is equal to 78. So I just need to solve this equation. I'm going to start by adding 10 to both sides. Then I'm going to divide by 4. And so if I do that on my calculator, I get x equals 22. Let's look at the question again. The question says find the value of x, did that, then the length of qr. Where is qr? Well, qr is this whole thing. We know this part is 78. Well, guess what? This is super easy because this part is also 78. How do I know? Because we have the markings. So qr is equal to 78 plus 78. So I'm going to put that into my calculator and I'm going to get 156. That was the super short way. You could do it the longer way, which is to take the 22, plug it in here. I'm going to do that over here. I'm going to take 4 times 22 minus 10 because sometimes you don't, you don't see it. You forget and you take the long way. You go, Ugh, I could have done the other way. But this I'm going to show you. So if you forgot to take the shortcut, then let's just plug in 22, and we get 4 times 22 on our calculator. That's 88, um, and then that's a minus sign. So we subtract 10, and that gets us a 78. So back what we said a second ago, this is 78, this is 78, so QR is 78 plus 78, which is 156. Okay, that is the end of the lesson. Um, we will work on this in class tomorrow.